Open my eyes.
John John and Lance is joining us this week. Let's give it up for them. I think this is their second time for both of them. It's a big deal. I love seeing them up here. So let's encourage them during worship and after worship. You guys make sure you to um, talk to them and say how much you appreciate them. All right, let's all stand and sing. He brought me to his banqueting table. He brought me to his banqueting table. He brought me to his banqueting table. Time. 
all try that together? Yeah? Sing it's battle over you. Battle over you. It's battle over me.
Prescott, God, thank you so much for this worship and what you're about to do in this place, God. We just exalt you today, Lord. Amen. Kids, that is it for worship. Thank you so much for coming by. Let's all give them a round of applause for all the kids that are here. Good morning. Oh, that's really loud. Sorry. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing today? My name is Jeff. I'm the administrator here at MP. Um, we have two campuses, one located here. You're in it. And we have another one in Rollin Heights. So if you're ever by Rollin Heights and you're figuring out, like, I can't make it to Amari Park, there's one in Rollin Heights, too, doing the exact same thing, just in different places. So people say you can't be in two places at once. Well, organizations can do that. So that's what we do. We have a few announcements for you. You will find in your bulletin this blue connection card. If we went to the next slide, if you actually fill it out and you're new, you actually get some cool gifts. One of them is this nifty shirt that looks like this. Doesn't have our name on it or anything like that. Sleeves are bare, but um, if you're new and you want one of these shirts, just fill out your information. You also get a USB drive. It's a 16 gig uh, USB drive stick. I believe it's 2.0. That's okay though, it still works. Um, and it's loaded up with 15 or 16 of our commonly sung worship songs, kind of gets you up, and up to speed a little bit, because when I first started coming to church, I hesitated to sing because I was like, I don't know the lyrics, I don't know what's going on here, this melody makes no sense to me. Um, so that's just a, a gift from us to you, and it's all for free. So if you want to do that, you go outside in the kiosk right here, there's a little booth, and just come find me, and we'll get you a shirt and a USB drive. All right, just have your little uh, connection card there. And before that, we're going to watch a little um, sh uh, video here, and then we're going to dim the lights. Please, let's give you a little...
happening in this video. Um, John and Sandy Fong, actually, together with their small group, um, decided to do a little missions with their, just their small group. And their group is actually comprised of people that are not all from the same church. And so they um, taking God's command to heart there and saying, you know what, God tells us to reach the, the lost and the homeless and the, the broken hearted, right? And so they're literally building a home for the homeless. Um, and you can probably talk to Sandy more, and she's right here in the front here. Um, she, you can probably ask her about these questions and why, and like what are the, some of the stories, and it's pretty good. Um, but we have an opportunity to do that as a church. And as a family as well, you saw um, a little girl painting right there, right? And so we can actually do that, and it's gonna be happening Veterans Day, 11-11, um, on our Roland Heights campus. If you don't know, have an address for that, it's actually on the bulletin on the back there. And we're doing that from, I think, 9 a.m. to about 6 p.m. You don't have to show up for the entire time, but we get to build a house there on the Roland Heights campus, and what happens is they, set, they ship it over to Mexico, and they're gonna send another team down there to put it all together, all right? So if you wanna participate in any of that, write on your connection card to say, like, um, house build 2017, sign me up, and we'll follow up with you, all right? So this is an opportunity to actually live out God's calling in our lives to reach people that we just can't see sometimes. And we want to be there, and we want to be able to um, say that, yeah, we follow God's word. Um, so as Christians, it doesn't matter which church you're actually from. We're all God's people, and we have to work together in that way, right? We're actually so much stronger if we pull together, right? Um, so that's a little bit of history behind that. And so if you want to volunteer or you want to, like, it's like, hey, how can I get involved? Just write down, give me inform more information about the house build, um, and then we'll send you more information, all right? And with that, we have another one more announcement before I turn things over. And this is our fall family festival. We already had our training. We're going to have a prayer time uh, on the 25th. That's this coming Wednesday. And the actual event is from 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, this Saturday. And this is actually a way for us as a church family to bless um, MPCS, right? And God says to um, kind of store up things in your storehouse to be able to bless other people. And this is what, the way we want to do that. We want to be able to support our families, too. Um, they're, they're offered a quality education by MPCS, but there are just some things that we as a church family, again, we get to do because we're Christians. If you're not a Christian, that's okay. Um, but we as Christians believe that God calls us to be able to um, bless other people because he's blessed us already. So we want to be able to, um, to use a, a cliche phrase, it's to pay it forward, right? And God actually calls us to bless others as he is blessing us. And we get to do that with the Fall Family Festival. And you're going to hear more about how to do that later on. But with that, I'm going to invite um, one of our board members to come up and do a little sharing about where we are in our process. That'll be Wes here. Thanks, Jeff. Good morning, Trinity. How are y'all? Ah, good. I'm glued. I'm with that. Good morning. Thanks. <laughs> um, I'm Wes Burrell. I am uh, one of the board members here, and uh, this will be brief this week. But um, next week, I uh, am going to, and um, possibly others from the board, we will present to you the uh, results of the surveys. A few weeks back, we filled out surveys, and um, we got a good response, got 175 or so. And um, I'm going to give you one word uh, to whet your appetites for next week, when we'll give you a whole bunch of words and, uh, and slides and talk about what we are looking for in a pastor, what we have, have, have talked about as a congregation, what it is that we, 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 are, we are dreaming of, as we've been discussing. That one word is loving, and this was in the category number one from section two, which was talking about what are the strengths of our community here and in Roland Heights, uh, our, our congregation overall, and this is across our multi-ethnic uh, congregations. We have, sorry, we have a Chinese congregation on campus here, Spanish, Chinese, Filipino over there, surveys from everybody, and across the board, overwhelmingly, our number one is loving congregation, familial congregation, that we are a place of welcome. And I thought that's something really to be pleased with, to praise the Lord for. That's what he called us to do. And so we want to continue doing that, and we'll discuss next week about how we can get some other leadership in here who will help us to continue doing that, as our leadership has been doing so far. And um, I'm going to turn this over to, to Abner, one of our leaders. <laughs> Good morning, Trinity. Um, so this is, uh, we're going to enter into a time of offering, and 
This is where we come together as a church family, right, to give back to the Lord some of what he has given to us. So if you are new to Trinity or if you're here visiting, please do not feel compelled to give anything. Uh, For the rest of us who make Trinity our home, this is an opportunity, like I said, for us to participate in what God is doing here in the congregation and the surrounding community. Uh, One of the things that we would like to invite you to consider giving to today is the Fall Family Festival. Like Jeff said, uh, the Lord has been given this opportunity uh, to really be a blessing to families at, uh, at the preschool. Uh, so we've been planning this event for about six weeks now, and one of our hopes is just to be able to build relationship, right, with, uh, with some of the families and help the parents actually build relationship with each other. A lot of times when we think about these events, we think that it's a kid's event, uh, but part of our vision this year is to help the families go uh, in, in small groups through each one of the stations. And while the kids are getting their faces painted, the parents are going to be asked to interact uh, over certain questions. So your gift today, if you decide to give to this, uh, we're going to be raffling off some things. We're going to need uh, uh, funds for decorations and food and all of the above. Again, this is an opportunity for us as a church to come together and participate with what God is doing here in the community. Um, why don't I bring the ushers up and then let's pray for the offering. Oh, and practically speaking, if you're interested in giving to that, please write a check in addition to your tithes uh, that says Fall Family Festival and the memo line. Let me pray. Oh, yeah. I guess we're going to sing the doxology. As you can tell, I'm new to this. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to partner with you in what you're doing in Monterey Park and in the surrounding communities. God, we thank you for the gifts that you give us, Lord. Thank you for those of us who have jobs and incomes right now. I I thank you for your provision. Lord, I pray for the families in the room uh, and for their families and friends who don't currently have sources of income. Lord, I pray for jobs. I pray that you would provide for them. God, I pray that you would uh, use us to provide for them also, Lord God, the things that you give us. I pray that we would... um, yeah, I want to bless other people, Lord, here at Trinity, and like I said, in the surrounding community. Father, we pray a blessing over this event that's happening uh, with MPCS next weekend. Lord, I pray that you would bring families. I pray that um, parents would build relationships with each other. Lord God, I pray that you would strengthen families. I pray that you would strengthen our relationships with them also, Lord. So we thank you. We lift up um, everything that comes into you. Uh, into the church today, Lord God. It all belongs to you, and I pray that you would help us be good stewards of the resources that you give us, Lord. So we thank you, and we pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hello, my name is Molly, and I'm the interim co-pastor here with my husband Abner at Trinity in Monterey Park. And so we're so glad you're here. And particularly for anybody here that's um, new or visiting us for the first time, we are so glad you're here. We look forward to meeting you and getting a chance to build more relationship with you. So we're going to take a minute to kind of do that together. We're a loving church, I guess, which is good, right? That's what I think we've experienced, and I love that the surveys show that. So let's be loving to one another and just welcome each other this morning. Forgot. How far do you want to be up? All right, go ahead and grab your seat. Awesome. Good to see you guys this morning. So we've come to the point in our service, we get to open up God's word and hear from God in the Bible, Um, and I feel privileged to be a part of being able to bring the scripture today and be able to speak to us today, so, and it's just nice to look out and see so many friendly faces here as we do that. So let's go ahead and um, say our prayer together as we start the service. Oh Lord, our God, you have chosen to make yourself known through your creation, your word, your son, and your spirit. Now reveal your glory to us and through us, the church. Speak to us, form us, lead us, dwell in us. Teach us today how to love as Jesus loves, to welcome the stranger, heal the sick, and care for the poor, to bear good news, build bridges, and bring your people home. For Christ in us is the hope of glory. May your perfect will prevail in us this day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome. All right. Well, this is our last Sunday where we're going to be in this dream series. So we've been doing this and in this theme of the dreaming over the last six weeks. And it's been a really good time for us as a church. Have you guys felt that? Like there's something good about this experience of dreaming together about where God is taking us as a church. And we've got to hear three different panels share from different age groups in our church. And there was something powerful about listening to God through them and hearing their dreams for us as a church and as a congregation. But I think it also, those panels spark something in us. I don't know if you felt that personally, but I would talk to people after the service, and then I would ask them, what about you? What about your dreams? And they would say, yeah, the panel made me think of this or that, and God was starting to birth dreams in them for the church. So I think it's been a good experience for us as a whole church to dream together, saying, God, where do you have us as a church? How are you growing us into the future? What are the dreams you're placing on our heart? 
um, for this place. And it is especially relevant as Pastor Albert and Pastor Christine are transitioning in this next year, and we feel that and the weight of that coming. And then last week, God moved powerfully. It was powerful as Pastor Albert and Pastor Christine shared of what they love about this church and about their dreams for Trinity, right? And they gave us those kind of words of exhortation of things to continue to abide by here in this church. And as we close the series today, I want to share with you a little bit of my dreams, the dreams that God has been placing on my heart for Trinity as I've been praying over the course of the fall. And I'm really going to be building off of the last question, one of that last kind of penetrating question that Albert gave us at the end of his sermon last week. He said, if the Holy Spirit were to leave this church, would anyone notice? And that's one of those powerful questions It's a very sobering question, and it's a really important one for us to consider and to think about as we think about moving forward as a church. So I want us to help us. How do we become a church more full of the Holy Spirit? Where we have a hunger for God, and we're seeing him manifest himself to us individually and corporately in undeniable ways. How to become a church like that? That's what we're going to be focusing on today in this last series, uh, script, or sermon in the dream series. So the scripture we're going to be looking at is in John chapter 4. It's the story of the woman at the well. So I bet if I asked everybody, a lot of us have probably read this story before. It's a familiar one. Maybe you heard it in Sunday school, or you've studied it before, you've maybe even taught it to other people before. It's a famous scripture. It's a powerful scripture, though. So I just want to invite you to open your heart in a fresh way to how God might want to speak to you through these words. Let me read for us. John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. So we see at this point in the Gospel of John that Jesus is with his disciples, and he is traveling from Judea to Galilee. Okay, So Judea is south, then there's Samaria in the middle, and Galilee is north, above Samaria. Okay, So they're on their way to Galilee, and they're going through Samaria. And the text says, I think it's interesting, is that that he had to go, right? He had to go. Um, He had to pass through Samaria. So I think there's something intentional about what Jesus is doing in in this time. And it tells us it's the sixth hour. The sixth hour was noon. And this is the hottest part of the day. Jesus and his disciples have probably been walking already for a long time that morning and into the day, and they're tired. And he's taking a break by this well. So let's continue reading. Verses 7 through 10. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would be giving you living water. So this woman recognized rightly that according to their society, Jesus is not supposed to be interacting with her and asking her for this drink. Right? This is taboo and not supposed to be allowed. Because there are major racial tensions between Jews and Samaritans. So in the Jewish history, some of the Jews married with other peoples around them in the surrounding areas, and so then they became biracial. And the Jews that were kind of full Jewish start to look down on those Samaritans as ones that were not as good, right? And so there's racial tension and hatred. It even says, John gives us that cultural clue that Jews do not interact with Samaritans. This is supposed to be how it goes, to the point that a lot of times when Jews would travel from Judea to Galilee or vice versa, they would go all the way around and take the long route as opposed to going through because they wanted to avoid Samaritans altogether. So Jesus is not supposed to be interacting with her, but here he is, taking a break and breaking every cultural barrier and asking this woman for a drink of water. I love this about Jesus. I just have these moments. Don't you love this, that Jesus 
is not stuck in the things that we're stuck in. And he pushes past those things because he wants to relate to all people. And on top of the racial dynamics, she's a woman. And men in a society like that, we're not supposed to be talking to a woman like this alone. And especially this woman. Later on in the text, we learn that she has had five husbands, and the man that she's living with is not her husband. So I think that wouldn't probably give you the best reputation even in our day. But back then, that would have been scandalous. Like, she would have been ostracized from the whole town. And we actually find out that she's coming at 12 p.m. The women would usually come as a social thing in the morning before it got hot. But she's not with the other women. She's all alone. And she's there in the hottest part of the day because she's avoiding everybody because they have pushed her out. Right? She's ostracized from this town. So we see Jesus breaking all these social barriers, and he asks this woman for a drink and starts this conversation with her. And then Jesus says this intriguing thing. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is saying, that's saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would be giving you living water. So I want to kind of unpack this verse today as we kind of focus on this over the course of the time. This is really the verse that God has put on my heart for Trinity as I've been praying for the fall. Right? So Jesus is saying, if you knew who I was and the gift that I had to offer, you would be actually asking me. You would be taking initiative with me, and I would be giving you living water. Right? I'm so good, and what I have to offer you is so good. If you understood that, you would be asking me. So let's talk a little bit about what is this living water that Jesus is offering this woman? What is that? We know from the Bible, throughout the Bible, the, uh, the image of water is often an image of God's presence. It's often an image of God's spirit. Right? And we see that this water that's being described is living water. It's a water that's alive. So Jesus is not just talking about like a physical water to, fill her, to quench her physical thirst. He's talking about a spiritual water. God's very presence that he wants to give her to be like a fountain of water welling up in her. Later in the story, in verses 13 and 14, it says, everyone who drinks, and Jesus says this to the woman, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks this water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So this living water that he's offering her is like this fountain, the spiritual fountain of living water that's come to make her alive. And Jesus said, if you understood how good that was and who I was, you would be asking me, and I would be giving this to you. That's my daughter, Mina. So I just wanted to um, tell a quick story about my daughter as I'm kind of getting into this. So um, the, the image in this story is that Jesus is saying, you should take initiative with me. Well, my daughter, she is coming to know what is good, okay? So she has an older brother named Santiago. He's five. And so she's gotten introduced to this world of treats. I don't know how you guys do this in your family. My family is one treat a day, and it's usually after dinner. And it's something, and she understands what is good, right? She gets it. So when it's time for this treat, she's the one that's lining up at the freezer looking for the ice cream, right? She is so excited for, for, for this treat that is coming. She knows what's good. And when I start scooping out the ice cream, she ends up, I mean, literally, she starts doing a little dance. And she spins around because she's just so excited because she's tasted ice cream and she knows what is good. Right? She understands how tasty it is, so she is the one that's first in line to be able to get this tasty ice cream. Right? She's tasted what is good, and she knows, and she, she's the very first one getting ready to get this treat for the day. Right? Let me just, I've lost my pages. All right, we'll find it. But what, I, what we know about that is that she understands what is good, and she's looking for that living water. Right? She understands what that, that is. And so I, I want to think about us. What is it that blocks us from having the same experience with Jesus? Right? That we are able to, to be first in line, like my daughter Mina, saying, I want this living water. What is it that keeps us from missing Jesus like that? So I want to talk about three things that I think are often blocks that might keep us 
from having this kind of excitement or initiative with Jesus to go after him for the living water. So the first thing we see, um, ah, there he is. The first thing we see is that um, sometimes we get used to Jesus, right? We've gotten familiar with him, we get used to him, and we forget how amazing he is. I think of it somehow, it's almost like uh, your house, you think about that, if you have pictures on the wall at your house, and you might have hung them up in the beginning, and you put them on the wall, and you say, oh my gosh, that looks so nice, and you kind of arrange them. But after a few years, you almost forget that those pictures are on the wall. Right? You've just gotten used to them. You don't even recognize it. It has to be like somebody else that comes over and says, oh my gosh, that painting is so beautiful. And then you look and you go, you're right, it is, I forgot, right? And I think the same can be true for Jesus, that we can get used to him, right? We've heard the stories before, we like him, but we're just familiar with him, and we can't see him in a fresh way anymore. And so it takes somebody that doesn't know Jesus to actually come and say, you know what, this is what's so amazing about Jesus, and you said, oh, that's right, I forgot, that's true, Right? Jesus is really that good. So sometimes we need somebody with a fresh perspective of Jesus to remind us who he is so that we get out of the just being used to him, right? We forget about him. So that's the first thing. Sometimes I think we get used to Jesus, and that blocks us from experiencing more of who he is in our lives. I think the second thing is that we often can get distracted um, and too busy in our lives, right? We're going along, and we have, like, shout-outs to God. We're like, okay, throughout our day, we say, God, I see you, or thank you for this, or thank you for this. Right? And that's good. We want to be able to do that. But sometimes we don't know how to actually stop and be still and ask him for more of that living water, to actually slow down and give him more space in our lives. And I heard this analogy once from one of my pastors, and he talked about like, um, God's living water like a faucet, like you see in this picture. And sometimes our soul is like this cup, and we're busy, we're full, we got lots of things going, we're overwhelmed with our lives, and we just take our, our, our soul and we go... Through the faucet, which is right? And so we get, like, it's good, better than nothing, but maybe we're, like, right up here, you know? And that's all we're getting of God in our lives. We're just, right? We don't have the space to actually experience more of God. But what would it be like if we went and we put our cup, our soul, under the faucet of his living water, and we let Jesus fill us up, and all of a sudden the water, we just stayed there, and the water kept rising and rising and rising, And all of a sudden, it starts spilling out and spilling out and spilling out. And we have this experience like being that fountain, like Jesus is offering the woman, where we are filled up by the love of God, and it just starts to flow out around us, right? And so I think we get too busy, and we need to learn how to give more time to experience God's presence in our life. And I know this is hard, right? Time, we don't always have a lot of time in our lives. It's busy. I'm a mom of two. Any other moms of young kids out there? Some of you guys? No, some of you, right? Young, or, or parents, right? We're just different ones. We're, we're busy people. And so it's not easy to spend time with God like that. It's not easy to put our cup under the living water and experience Jesus filling us up. Right? It takes sacrifice. But I remember there was a woman that I heard a story from that really spoke to me about this. She was a missionary in Colombia. And so she um, was there with her three young kids. She was American, but she was living there with the three young kids. And she was very busy in her work, her missionary work, but then also with her little kids under five. And she said she had one free hour of the day. That was it, one free hour. And that was like she could write letters home, she could um, do the dishes, she could just have downtime, she could spend time with God. She only had one hour, and it felt so precious to her. And she felt God inviting her, can you give me that one hour of the day? Will you give me your, your one hour? And she was like, God, that's my one hour to do all these things. How can I give you this? It's so precious. It costs her a lot. But she said, okay, God, I'm going to give you this. All I have is that one hour. I'm going to give you the one hour. Because she wanted to taste more of how good Jesus was in his living water. And that inspired me as a young mom with little kids. And so I've been trying that in my own life. It's like, okay, Jesus, will you help me get up at 5 in the morning? I'm not a morning person at all. Will you help me get up 5 in the morning so I can spend time with you from 5.30 to 6.30 before my kids wake up? Because I'm thirsty. I want to be like Mina, who's first in line to be able to get what is good with Jesus, right? I want that in my life. And so what does it look like to give God more space in our lives and to invite him to fill us up? 
The third block I think that might be for some of us is maybe we've just never encountered Jesus like this before. As you hear about this living water, or you hear about this cup overflowing, you're like, that sounds nice, but I don't know how to connect to God that way. I don't know what that, what that looks like. I've just never experienced that before. Or maybe you are somebody that's praying and reading the Bible on a regular basis, but if you're honest with yourself, it doesn't feel very alive. It doesn't feel like you're really connecting to Jesus that deeply, right? And so you just don't know how. And that's real. We need to learn like anything. We need to learn how to spend time with Jesus. So I'm going to come back to that in a few minutes. We're going to talk practically how do we actually get more of this living water and this relationship with Jesus in our life. So I want you to think about it for yourself. What's your block? What keeps you from recognizing how good Jesus is and taking initiative like Mina to get more of this living water in your life? What is it for you? Well, this woman, she didn't know Jesus before this interaction, so she didn't have an opportunity to know how good he was and know that she should be taking initiative to, to get more of him in, in her life. But we actually do. We do know more, right? In the Bible, the Bible is full of stories about God's character that shows us how good he is, right? That will convince us of how good he is, that will help us recognize, oh, the best thing we can do is spend more time with him. So I wanted to take a few minutes to help us remember Right? Jesus says, if you knew who I was, you would be interacting with me more. You would be taking more initiative. So I want to help us remember again who Jesus was, is in the Bible, just even in the book of John. In the very first three chapters before this interaction with the woman, I want us to kind of look back and see who Jesus is and be amazed in a fresh way. Can we do that? So not where we're just like, oh, we're used to him, but we're like Nina. We're like, yes, I want this, where we're doing our little happy dance because we're excited to get more of Jesus in our life. So let's go in and, and kind of just do a quick survey of what we've seen of Jesus in the Gospel of John so far. And let's invite Jesus to amaze us. It says, in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And later in verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So John is telling us about this word. You see that repetition, the word, the word, the word. The word was there from in the beginning. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And the whole earth, the whole universe was made through him. And then it says that this word becomes flesh and dwells among us. Right? as a person. So we know that that's actually referring to Jesus, that when it says word, it's referring to Jesus. And so Jesus is the one that has been there in the beginning. Like, try and picture what that would mean in the beginning. Like, before all things, Jesus was there, right? He is in the beginning. He is the one that has um, created all things, and all things were created through him. He's powerful. He's with God the Father, but he is also God. And we see that um, John uses this word, word in the Greek that means logos. And that logos is a Greek word that was like the logic, meaning the logic behind an argument. Right? So John is using it here saying that Jesus is like the logic, the divine logic behind the whole universe. He's the divine reason and wisdom behind all things. That's who Jesus and all things were made through him. But then what's powerful is that Jesus takes on human flesh and dwells among us and comes to be with us. Right? He comes close to us. So in the very beginning of John, we see that Jesus is powerful and, and behind all things, that divine logic, but he is also personal and comes close to us. Later then in John chapter 1, it says that there are several people, several men that have this experience where they are following after Jesus, and then he says, what do you want? And then he invites them to come and see, and they just spend one day with Jesus, only one day. And after one day, they come back and tell their brother and their other friend, you know, you know, we have found him. He's the Messiah, right? We have found him. He's the one that we've been waiting for. And so just after one day, they're recognizing, oh my gosh, this is the guy. So Jews, they were waiting for this Messiah to come, right? And they believed that the Messiah would be sent from God and that he would come and set the Jews free from political oppression, and will restore God's people. And they've been waiting for hundreds of years for this one to come. And after only one day, these men are saying, this is the guy. He is it. And they're so excited. So John is telling us that Jesus is the one that we've been waiting for. Right? Not only is he this divine logos, but he is the one that we've been waiting for. 
Then it keeps continuing. In John chapter 2, it talks about Jesus does his first miracle in the book of John. And he turns 180 gallons of water into wine in an instant. Try and picture that. Even like think of that picture. What kind of power does it take to turn 180 gallons of water into wine in just an instant? Right? Just powerful, miraculous. But then what the text tells us is that the person in charge of the wedding, they were at a wedding at the time, said, most people serve you know, the not-so-good wine at the end, but you serve the very best. And so we realize what Jesus provides is that he provides the very best wine. So in places of lack in our lives, he provides miraculously, but he provides the best, and he provides it in abundance. Just continuing on, that we just see that Jesus is incredible, right? that he's miraculous, that he provides the very best. And then in um, John chapter 3 and chapter 4, we have these two interactions that Jesus has with individuals. One is a religious leader named Nicodemus. And Nicodemus is a powerful man. He's a man that has um, religious authority in that society. He's a Pharisee. And Pharisees were all about keeping to the holiness of God, the laws of God, and helping the Jewish people follow the laws of God. So he was a powerful religious man with a lot of respect in that society. And then we also see that Jesus is interacting with this woman at the well. Like we've talked about, she's on the other side of the social spectrum, right? She has no power. She is broken, right? Um, she's ostracized by her community and has no respect. But Jesus has these personal interactions with these two individuals, and he's longing to give them both this living water that he's offering her. And he's wanting that for, for Nicodemus as well. To Nicodemus, he says, he's this powerful man. He says, you need to humble yourself. And you need to become like a little baby and be spiritually reborn. He challenges him. That would be hard for a man of great power to be challenged, to be like a spiritual baby and start over. Right? And to this woman that's broken and hurting, she says she challenges her to get rid of, of these husbands and these bad relationships that she's drinking from and to instead drink from this living water and to have this relationship with him. So we see that Jesus is really offering this living water to both. Right? to Nicodemus and to this woman. And that's what he's offering to all of us, that no matter where we're at, he has this living water that he's bringing that he's longing to satisfy our soul with. So I just step back. Just in those first couple chapters in the book of John, we just see amazing things. Jesus is the creator of all things. He's the divine wisdom and reason behind the universe. He's the God that comes in the flesh and draws near to us. He is the one that we've been waiting for. He is the one that can provide miraculously in our places of lack. He is the one that provides the very best and in abundance. And he is one that is revealing himself personally to all people right where they're at. He's longing for people to be, to be with him. And so my hope is as you hear these stories, that you are wanting to be more in God's presence, that you're starting to see more of who Jesus is, and you just like this woman, you'd be like, oh, I want to take initiative with Jesus and come after him for myself and experience more of his living water in my life, right? That we would be amazed by Jesus in the scripture, and as we do that, we would want more of him in, a, in our lives. So I want to talk a little bit practically. How do we get more of God's presence in our lives? What does that look like for us to drink more of this living water in our own lives? So the first thing I want to encourage us then is just the Bible. I love the Bible. So I've been reading the book of John over the course of this last year, and I've been having so much fun. The Bible has been so alive, right? It's been so much fun. Because how are we supposed to know the character of God unless we read the Bible, right? So God gives us the Bible. So how do we grow in being people that when we read the Bible, we're more amazed by Jesus as we read it? that we are just captured by who he is, that we're overwhelmed, that we're able to see that Jesus is not boring and something to get used to, but Jesus is powerful and he's this living water that's come to satisfy our souls. Right? How do we experience more of that? So what does it look like for you to spend more time just being amazed by Jesus in the Bible? And then as you do that, what does it look like for you to turn to God and worship and say, thank you, God, for who you are, and just let him know how grateful you are for who he is? And then maybe put on some worship music and just enjoy his presence more and more to experience him with you. Do you know how to meet God like that? Whereas you're praying, you just feel like his presence is rising up among you and you feel overwhelmed by his beauty and his goodness and you're just amazed by who he is. 
What does that look like for us to encounter Jesus like that? And if you don't know how to do that, if you don't know how to spend time with God in the Bible or in prayer like this, I want to encourage you to get around things in church that will help you in that. So Wes and Talene lead an inductive Bible study before church on Sunday mornings that you can join in to get more of the Bible and to learn more of God's character. Abner um, and Aaron are leading an inductive Bible study on Wednesday nights for men to get more of who God is in their lives and to experience more of his character and his presence. Sandra Wong and Chris Wong are leading a class on prayer, actually, on Tuesday nights called Fresh Wind and Fresh Fire. I know that Carol's in that. And so if you're wanting to grow more with God in prayer, you can read this book about prayer and experiencing more of God's presence. And that's another way to get around God. And I just want to encourage you that next Wednesday, we're going to have a prayer meeting here at the church to pray for that fall family festival and God's purposes there. And so I'm wanting that to be a time where we gather all together and experience this living water and his presence among us in a powerful way. Right? How do we gather together in places that help us experience more of who Jesus is in the word, that we would be captured by him, that we would not be used to him, but we'd be like Mina and say, I want more. I want more of God in my life. How do we experience And the last encouragement I have is if you don't know how to pray and read the Bible like this, ask somebody that you know that knows how to do that and do it with them. The way my kids learn to do things is I have to show them first, and then they learn. So sometimes we need to just join somebody when they read the Bible and pray so we can learn how to do that for ourselves. So I just want to invite you, if anybody wants to come and join me in the morning, 5.30 to 6.30 at my house, I'd love to have you come, right? I know it's early, but I want you to come and join me and to be experienced more of God, right, um, through the Bible and through his presence, or find somebody else here in the church that's good at that and join them and be able to experience God together. And the last category I want to say, for those of you that are here that might not consider yourselves followers of Jesus, Right, that you haven't decided to follow Jesus or you're not really sure what you think about Jesus, if you're curious about Jesus through these scriptures and you want more of him, come and ask me. I'd love to ask you and interact with you about your questions about Jesus and help you grow to taste more of this living water. So as we grow in being more amazed by God in our personal lives, we will come to church on Sunday more filled up um, with worship to Jesus. We won't need the worship leader to convince us because worship has already been welling up in our hearts all week. As we start to sing, we will hardly be able to contain our joy. And this happens for me sometimes. If I've been spending time with Jesus, drinking of his living water all week, then I'm aware of his presence. And when I come into worship, I can hardly contain myself. Sometimes you guys hear me, right? I just can't contain it. I'm so excited. And that's just my way of expressing things to God, right? But there's lots of ways to do that. But I find the opposite is true, too. If I haven't been spending some time with Jesus in the Bible or connecting to him, when I come into the service, Jesus feels more fuzzy and distant. And it's harder for me to connect to the words in the song that I'm singing, right? So there's something about spending time with Jesus that makes my worship more alive, where I just feel like, oh, I'm so excited about you, God. And I want to say one quick thing. It's not about um, the way that you worship, right? It's not about being loud like me. I tend to be loud and excited, right? People notice that. But it's not about that. It's about just being a true worshiper. Later in the book of, uh, or in the chapter when Jesus is interacting with this woman, he's like, the, the worshipers the Father is seeking is those that worship him in spirit and in truth, right? That they worship him in spirit and truth. And it's about having that genuine heart of worship. So that could be quiet. That could be loud. It could be any cultural style. It doesn't matter. But what does it look like for you to be drinking of that living water throughout your week so then when you're coming into the service, you're filled up by who God is, and you're excited to be able to worship him. And while we want the pastoral staff to do well in teaching the word and leading us to Jesus through the sermons, we don't want to be dependent on that for our feeding. What would it be like as a church if each week we were spending time with Jesus in the word? We were already getting fed by Jesus, and Sunday is just a continuation of that feeding. We come in here full of God. What would that look like for us to be able to then minister to one another because I have faith and you have faith. How can we pray for one another in our challenging situations? All of a sudden, we have something from God to give away. In A.W. Tozer's The Pursuit of God, he writes, I want deliberately to encourage this mighty longing after God. The lack of it has brought us to our present low estate. The stiff and wooden quality about our religious lives is a result of our lack of holy desire. Complacency is a deadly foe of all spiritual growth. 
Acute desire must be present or there'll be no manifestation of Christ to his people. He waits to be wanted. Too bad that with many of us, he waits so long, so very long in vain. Every age has its own characteristics. Right now, we are in an age of religious complexity. The simplicity which is in Christ is rarely found among us. And instead are programs, methods, organizations, and a world of nervous activities which occupy time and attention, but can never satisfy the longing of the heart. So as I share these quotes, I'm not trying to say that our programs and things we do at Trinity are in vain, or they're not honoring to God. They are. But I think what I love is he is calling out a holy desire in us. A longing for more of God's presence. A longing to say, you know what, I've tasted of that living water, and I'm thirsty, and I want to keep coming back. I'm desperate for God to pour out his spirit. Right? That kind of holy desire. Because the main point isn't just all the spiritual activities. The main point is Jesus himself. It is having this holy desire for God himself to experience his presence, to be captivated by him, to just sit back and be amazed by him, to pick up the Bible and be astounded by his character. I come into church now that I'm in the office. I come in here sometimes, and I just put on worship music, and I just worship the Lord here in this place. And I just say, Jesus, I love you. I want more of you in this church, in this place. I long for you to be somebody that we encounter and that we're we're just overwhelmed by. What does that look like for us to have that kind of holy desire as a church? We are longing for more of Jesus himself. And Toza reminds us that God responds to this holy desire from us and then manifests himself. He reveals himself as we seek him. And if you caught that, it says he is waiting to be wanted. So there's something as we attend to God, as we worship him, as we come with hearts that are moved by him and taking initiative with him and first in line because we want more of him, as we do that, there's something about that that moves the heart of God. And God starts to manifest himself to us and move in power in our midst. That's my prayer for us at Trinity, is that we would see God manifest his presence the Holy Spirit would come in power and we would encounter him and would feel like we're in his cloud, that he's right here and we're right there and we're overwhelmed by who he is, right? And I believe as we have this mighty longing for God as a church, that we will experience God manifest himself through the Holy Spirit in a fresh way. We will leave church every Sunday knowing that we encountered God, that God brought healing in our lives, that he is real and able to work in even our most desperate situations. We will experience more miracles. I believe that Jesus will do miracles in this church, that he will bring healing, emotional and physical, to people. And that people will encounter the love of Jesus and they will decide to follow them, follow him with their lives. We will start hearing words from God about how he wants to use us in our friends' lives, in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, And I believe this is how we're going to become a river church. Like Albert talks about being a river church. We're not just a lake that comes and worships and that kind of stays here. But we're a river church that God moves in and then we go out to have impact into the community. I think as we come into that glory of his presence and he manifests his glory in us, we will see God move in powerful ways. But one of the ways, he will speak to us. He will give us words and he will send us out to the communities around us and to the world. This is how we're going to become a river church. I felt like God woke me up in the middle of the night and said, every river has a source. You think of like a glacier or something like that, right? Like we can't be, make ourselves a river church. God alone can do that. But as we experience his living water, as we put our cup and we sit there with God and he manifests his glory, God will speak to us and he will do things to us and he will send us out to be part of this river of living water in our neighborhoods and in the world. So as we come to a close, I want to give us one last story of a young girl who I think that will inspire us in our pursuit of God. And then we're going to actually have some time in worship and in prayer after the sermon to respond to God about how do you want more of God's presence in your life? How do you want to respond to Jesus' invitation? He says that if we knew how good he was and what he had to offer us, we would be taking initiative with him. So what does it look like today in the service to take initiative with Jesus and say, I want more of you today? 
I want to experience your manifest glory here in this place. I want you to speak into my life. So we're going to do that in a minute. But I want to tell you the story of a young girl named Chloe that I heard about from my friend. So my friend was at a church conference, and um, this little girl was there. She was only about eight or nine years old, and her name was Chloe. But what stood out to, um, about her was that every time they would come into worship, she would be like this little girl in the picture, and her hands would be all the way up raised, and she would have this kind of sincere heart of worship to God. She'd be like one of those true worshipers. But she was eight or nine, right? That's really young to have that kind of heart for God. And it was intriguing to, the, to my friend. He's like, this little girl just knows something about who God is. She just is worshiping with full abandon. And so he went up and he engaged with her and he asked her, right? He asked her, why was she so worshipful and happy in God? And she told him that she was actually adopted from an orth- orphanage in China. And that her family that adopted her was there at, at the conference. And she knew what her father in heaven had done for her. She knew how God had loved her. How that she had been this girl in an orphanage and left alone, and now she had a family. And she knew that she had a father in heaven that loved her, right? And she was, she was convinced of his goodness. And that's why she was worshiping him with such abandon. She was just so in love with God because of what he had done for her. And she said her dream was that she would go and she would get older, and then she would adopt as many orphans as she could from China so that they could have a family as well, right? Just like she'd experienced, so they could know the love of God like she'd experienced. And I love this story, and this is like what I want for us as a church fraternity, that we would be like this little girl, that we would know how good Jesus is, that we would know this living water, that we would be overwhelmed about our Father in heaven and what he's done with us, and we would have worship that's a true worship that would be abandoned to God, whatever way that you do that, but a heart that is a true and genuine worship that says, God, I want you more than anything else, that you would be hungering for his presence in your life and encountering his love in your life, and from that place, you would say, God, make me a river of living water to the world around me. Make us, Trinity, a river of living water to the world around us. Would we be like this little girl? Would we be like Mina? Would we know what is good? And would we take initiative to go after Jesus, to read the Bible, to spend time in his presence, to come to church and to expect God to show up? Would we have that kind of heart for God, right? I believe like this is an invitation that God has for us as a church. And this is my dream for us at Trinity. Amen. So let me go ahead. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to just pray for us, and then I'm going to give us an invitation for how we can respond and engage with God um, for the last 20 minutes of our service. So Jesus, um, I just thank you that, you're, that you are all these things, that you are the creator of the universe, that you are God in the flesh, that you are the one that we've been waiting for, that you are a miraculous provider that provides the very best in our places of lack, that you, are an individ- you come to us individually and speak words of challenge and truth so that we can experience your living water. We recognize, Jesus, that you are good and you are beautiful. You are not boring. You're not someone to get used to. You're not someone to put on the back of the list. But you are, Jesus, you are one to make the the top of the list, to be first in line to get more of. And so, Jesus, I pray for us today that you would stir in our hearts that you would make us like this little girl, Chloe, that knows how good you are, that is overcome by your beauty and your love for us, and that we would be worshiping you with full abandon. Our hearts would be overwhelmed by your goodness, and we would just love you, Jesus. And as we do that, God, we pray that you would manifest your glory in us, that you would come, Holy Spirit, and move in our midst, that you would bring healing that you bring new life, that you would heal physical things, that you would speak words of purpose, that you make us a river of living water to the world around us. God, we invite your presence. We invite your manifest glory in this place, Lord God. We long for you. We don't want to be used to you. We long for more of who you are. We invite your presence in this place, God. Captivate us, God. Amaze us in a fresh way by who you are, Jesus. 
long for you. We long for you. Come, Jesus. Would you move in our midst? Would you pour out your spirit and help us hear your voice, God? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to take some time to respond to God, and we're going to do that in three ways. We have about 20 minutes. This is something new we're going to try as a church, as a way to cultivate a space to ask God for more of his living water in our midst. To say, we want more of you, God. We want your glory to come. So there's three ways that you can respond during this time. One, we're going to have continued worship. And so you can be worshiping Jesus. What is God speaking to your heart? What are the things that blocks you from getting more of Jesus in your life? How do you want more of him? How do you want to take initiative to get more of him in your life? Interact with Jesus. You can do that quietly in your seat by just praying and talking to God. You can come up and we're going to have a prayer team here on both sides available to pray for people. So if you're like, I just want more of God and I want God to, to remove these blocks from me, come up and get prayer. And just a quick word about that. This is sometimes people feel really uncomfortable coming up to get prayer. It feels vulnerable. But I think it's like being like Mina. You know, you're going to be the first in line because you know what's good. I want to come. It's actually a place of honor. When you come to get more of God, Jesus says, I love to pour out my blessing and my spirit to those that are seeking more after me. So feel free to come. There's no shame. Just be hungry for God and ask for more of him. And then we're also going to continue to worship and sing. And so worship could be a way of responding and saying, God, I want more of you in my life. I want more of your presence in my life. So this is just going to be a time for us to give to God, just to experience this living water and invite him to manifest his presence among us. To invite him to come and be in our midst. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Sandy and she's going to lead us in worship. And the worship team, or the prayer team, if you guys can come in the front so that you are ready and available to pray for people. If anybody would like prayer, please come and um, let's just experience God together.
vida. I just want you to think about um, what are your favorite things about who Jesus is, your favorite things about God's character, and just enjoy his presence. Just tell him why you love him. You don't have to do it out loud, but just quietly in your mind, tell him why you love him. Enjoy his presence. As you hear the music, let you just let it move your heart. Enjoy God's presence and invite him to come and to be present with us as we continue to worship. <coughs> things that uh, the Lord put on my heart as we were praying. I think uh, I just want to invite some of the men of the church to come up. I just feel like sometimes the things that Molly was saying, uh, as men, I think sometimes we isolate ourselves, right? And we're like, oh man, like, I, I want to do that. I want to enter into a relationship with Jesus. I want to let my guard down, but sometimes that's it's hard to do by yourself. And I just felt like, um, yeah, I just wanted to extend an invitation to the men in the church in particular, if you want to come up. And I think just specifically what I want us to pray uh, together in a circle is that, is that God would strengthen our relationship with Him and, and that as men, uh, we would be free uh, to worship Jesus like my daughter does. Uh, or she's not worshiping Jesus, she's worshiping ice cream at that point. But, um, but that we would have that kind of desire for the Lord uh, 
as a men at Trinity that that would just inspire other men uh, to worship him too. So if you feel like you want to join David and I in interceding for that, please come up. And then the rest of us can continue worshiping. You can love me more in a moment than other lovers could in a lifetime. And you can love me more in a moment than other lovers could in a lifetime. You can love me more in a moment than other lovers could in a lifetime. Yeah. And you can love me more in a moment than other lovers could in a lifetime. We're just gonna sing out again, friends. You can love me more in a moment. Than other lovers could in a lifetime. And you can love me more in a moment than other lovers could in a lifetime. Sing that again, church. And you can love me more in a moment than other lovers could in a lifetime. You can love me more in a moment than other lovers could in a lifetime. Yeah. You can love me more in a moment than other lovers could in a lifetime. You can love me more in a moment than other lovers could. with you invite your presence with us we just say that we enjoy you this morning we just say that you're very enjoyable that we love to sit like your children and lay back on your chest I don't know about you but I feel tired as a mom sometimes I imagine we all feel tired and sometimes I wonder who cares for me but Jesus I thank you that you're one that wants to care for us that you are have a big chest that we can lean back and just fall back into and you hold us in everything that feels overwhelming and your peace comes upon us. So Jesus, we just say that you're beautiful this morning, that you captivate us, we enjoy you, we love being your kids, we love to be in your presence, Lord. We just thank you that you're here, we just worship you, we just worship you, we say we love you, Jesus, we enjoy your presence, come God, continue to move in our midst, come God. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you 
expose us. So I just felt like God is here in our midst. I think that's what I've been praying for more than anything else is that we would encounter him. I just just appreciate you taking the risk to kind of create more space for him. We want to be a a, a church where people, we, we could say the Holy Spirit is here. Where we are indeed encountering his love. That he is alive and that he is moving. That song where it's that we would be, um, open up our eyes in wonder. That's one of my prayers for us as a church. When we have that holy wonder, that childlike wonder, where we are just like, oh Jesus, that's who you are all over again. That's right. I forgot. Oh, but you're so good. And I just want to be with you as a child. Like Jesus just longs to be wanted and he wants to be with us. And that we would say, yeah, we want to be with you. And that we would make space in our lives with God to cultivate this kind of experience with him. Where we would put our cup under the living water and let him fill us and fill us and fill us and fill us us until we're overflowing. We can't keep it inside and we have to give it away. That's what I long for for Trinity. And that we might have more and more moments like this as a church where we encounter his love together where we can indeed say the Holy Spirit is here and he is moving and breaking chains and everything we sing about is true. It is all true. And he is who he says he is and that he is able to come and do more than we can imagine. That's what I long for. And that's what our city needs and our world needs. We need more of God. We can't be a river without the source. We need God's presence to fill us. And we grow in a journey of being able to encounter more of that together. So he says, if we knew who he was, right, if we knew the living water he was offering us, we would be taking initiative to seek more of him. Church, how can we take initiative with him this week in our own lives with God? And then can we come back on Sunday next week expectant, just like me, now first in line, I'm ready to go. I am pumped to worship because God is real and he's alive and I want to meet him together as a community of God. I believe God wants to do that in our midst. So we're going to continue doing this over the course of the next weeks. We'll be ending the service at 1230, but we'll say, feel free to pick up your kids and go hang out in the courtyard. But if you'd like to stay for an optional time of prayer and worship and getting prayer ministry, we're going to have this space to continue to cultivate this heart of God and continue to press into more of God's presence together. So thank you guys so much for joining us this Sunday. Be blessed and have a good rest of your day. Amen.